Hi, Kaylin. I hear you're having some trouble with the horse that's pulling back and breaking your halters. And you said that it's broken every halter that you put on it. Uh, what I would suggest is you get yourself a good quality rope halter. Uh, when I say good quality, not one of them real little thin ones that are real, <clears throat> real kind of sloppy fitting. They need to fit underneath the horse's jaw correctly. Some of them when they put them on, and, and you're gonna pay the same amount of money for those kind of halters, which in my, in my books are garbage. They don't fit the horse's head. And the guys out there promoting them should know better. So a horse's halter that'll fit underneath his jaw correctly. So when you tie up it over top of his head, it snugs up underneath his jaw and he can't pull it off. But a lot of those halters you can buy from these different outfits is this piece right here won't fit underneath their jaw so when that horse pulls back it'll slide underneath and pop off their heads. So get one with a, a good quality rope that fits nicely and get a good lead that won't break. This is yacht line. It's super strong stuff. And if you're having a horse pull back and break a halter I mean, I, I've used these for years, and I've had plenty of horses sent to me that pull back, and I have never had one break it. So what I'll do is I'll tie them up high enough above. I, what I do is I use a, I use a pole, or a, you know they call it a patience pole or whatever like that, or I use a high line. But before I'd ever tie them on a high line, I get them to where they're operating really good in my groundwork, to where when I take the slack out of the rope, they start coming back to me. Uh, there's a lot of information like that on Cowboy Campus of working on your horse on the end of your lead to get them to where they understand when that slack comes out of the rope, they better be getting to their feet and be thinking about coming back to you. So uh, a horse pulling back is very dangerous and uh, it can wreck a lot of equipment. What some people will do is they'll, they'll tie them up to a string or something so when a horse pulls back, they don't break the halter or anything and it'll break that string. And that is teaching the horse to where if he pulls back, he's going to get a release because the string is going to break. So what you're doing is you're really, you're avoiding the issue. What you need to do is you need to work that horse on the ground, on the, on the halter shank, do it properly to where they understand when that slack comes out of that lead rope, they need to yield their feet, disengage their hindquarters. And when you get them operating like that to where they understand that and you tie them above their withers, tie them up high, uh, you'll get through that problem. And if they're breaking your halters, your halters are not good quality. So some might say, okay, well, put a big bronc halter on them. Well, that, that's fine too, to where if that's all you're doing is you're getting them to be, that's like say a, a pulling collar on your saddle to where it's something that they can pull on and push on and it's not gonna break. Uh, a rope halter, because it's got these pressure points and, and it's, it's fairly narrow, what it's gonna do is it's gonna be a lot more accurate to where when you uh, take the slack out of it, they're gonna feel it. If you have a big old dull leather halter on it, it's, uh, it's not very accurate. So, I've been using these for years. Um, they're not uh, they're not cheap, but they're well worth the money. So get yourself a good halter. Check out Cowboy Campus to where we talk about the groundwork. Uh, there's a lot of other guys out there that do a really good job on that groundwork too. And, and that's what it's all about is getting control of your horse's feet. And when you tie them up, make sure you tie them up high enough that it's above his withers. So if you have any more questions on that, get back to me.